Maria and I would like to thank everybody for their love and prayers and support. I, I feel like I'm being carried by an amazing grace. A number of important people in my life advised me against sharing the eulogy, thinking it would be too hard for me. However, the last two nights, as I couldn't hardly sleep, it was very helpful for me to take some time and systematically try to remember all the things how my Ben is precious to me, my wife, my family, my daughter, Rachel. So please pray for me as I take a few minutes and share about my son's life. But Ben, we love you. We love you. I don't know if you see this this picture was taken this week. My family and I went to Ocean City, and um, that is definitely Ben. Benjamin John Siegel. His Hebrew name is Buch Ben Simcha. One snowy night, I was waking from a deep sleep by my wife saying, get up. The baby's is here. And I walked into the bathroom where she sat, and I said, that's good, and turned around to go back to sleep. <laughs> I'm a man. And um, she made it very clear that that was not what was going to happen. I quickly woke up, and we, 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 we followed our plan, and we got in the car. It was a snowy January night. On the way to the hospital for, for some crazy reason, because we heard it in our class that we had to get lollipops. So we stopped at an all-night gas station and picked up some lollipops that we absolutely never used. Um, when we got there, our doctor wasn't there. Well, well, actually, on the way, for some crazy reason, we felt like we were supposed to pray for a Christian nurse. That was silly. We said, why, what really different doesn't matter? But in our hearts, we started praying that God would give us nurses that believed in God. When we got to the hospital, our doctor wasn't there. And they gave us a doctor that we never met before and we didn't know. And um, my wife was in labor just for about two or three hours. And the doctor came in and said, if the baby isn't born by 7.30, we're going to do a C-section now. Neither mother or child were in any pain or distress, but the doctor had an agenda. And at that, the nurses asked us what the baby's name was. Well, a number of months before, I was praying, and I heard the voice of God, and I don't say that lightly. I heard God's voice that says the baby's name would be Benjamin. Now, we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. And so I went into the kitchen where my wife was, and I said, Maria, this is crazy, but I just felt like I heard God speak to me. And God said that our baby would be Benjamin. And Maria, like a good wife, said, well, what if it's a girl? <laughs> and I said, then I guess I heard wrong. <laughs> but both of us from that second on knew that that's what our baby's name, his name was Benjamin, and when we looked it up, Benjamin means son of my right hand, and I believe that that's what my son is. He's the son of our right hand. When Ben came to us, it was one of the happiest moments of my life. Once I had the opportunity to hold him in my arms, Something spontaneous happened. I started to dance around that hospital room. I lifted him up with a joy that was unspeakable. And I gave thanks to God. At Benjamin's birth, we praised and danced.
for the great joy and promise he gave me. Very early in his life, Benjamin John accepted Jesus. He was at three or four years old. He was at, we were at a Messianic conference up in Pennsylvania. And Ben was very, very smart as a young kid. At an early age, he started reading and doing math. And um, it was really a privilege to, to teach him. At a young child, he had a deep knowing. He, he was a child that when you talked to him, there was death. And um, he was a very good student. His only problem is he wanted all the hundreds. And he got almost all the hundreds. But it's hard to tell your son that a 95's okay and an 89's okay, you know? But he wanted hundreds. Ben loved to read. One day, about 10 o'clock, we put our son to bed. And from a, his child, when he was just an infant, 18 months old, it was in a day when we didn't have a whole lot of money. And um, I wanted to buy my son a Bible. And it, we didn't have money for that. And on my birthday, I received some, some money. And I quickly went out and I purchased my son a child Bible. And so from 18 months old, every night I would go into his crib and we would read the Bible. And at first it was... The story of no one saying, look, Ben, that's a giraffe. And I would say, God made the giraffe. And, and I'd ask him, I said, Ben, who, who made the giraffe? And he would say, God made the giraffe. And we'd show him the pictures of the stars. And I said, Ben, you see those stars? God made the stars. And I said, Ben, who made the stars? And he would say, God made the stars. And at a very early age, he loved to read. One night... I put him to bed at about 10 o'clock. He was probably a preteen at this time. And so he went to bed. And about 1 o'clock, I went past his bedroom. And the lights were on. And I said, Ben, what, what are you doing? It's 1 o'clock in the morning. And he said, Dad, I started to read the book of Ezekiel, and I want to finish it. <laughs> I'm a pastor. How do you argue? with that. I don't know if you see this child here, but he's a beast. He was always, always strong. He liked that he was stronger than I was. Or wasn't, he was probably a young teenager when he realized that. Um, he loved the story as a little kid of David and Goliath. Um, he was fairly smart, and he always wanted me to be Goliath. And he really acted out the story. And so he would take pillows and throw it at me, and he would hit me in the head, and I'd have to fall down. Ben loved football. He loved football because he liked to hit people. He absolutely played defense, and he liked to hit people, and he did it well. Um, one day, Ben was very affectionate to his mother, and he loved his mother. They had a very special relationship, and he would kiss his mom goodbye. This is at the football field with all his football buddies, and his mom said, you know, Ben, because we know how kids are. He said, you don't need to kiss me goodbye, Ben. And he says, what am I worried about? What are they going to do to me? And he, he knew he could handle himself. If Ben was born in the 18th to the 11th century, I have no doubt in my mind that Ben would have been a Viking. Ben had Viking blood. Ben was a warrior. He was a mighty man of God at a young age. We spent most of our Saturdays when he was growing up, um, taking him to archery. He both practiced and competed archery for many years. In 1999, the, my son followed his savior in water baptism. 
It was on July 10th, on my 40th birthday. Ben wanted to be bar mitzvahed. And so about three or four years before Ben was 13, me and my son would sit at our kitchen table, and I would teach him biblical Hebrew. And we would study the Hebrew language. And I, I asked him, I allowed him, really he's not necessarily kosher, but I allowed him to pick his own half Torah. That's the portion you get to study. And then picked Isaiah 53. So we took great time and pains and from the original Hebrew text, studied that scripture and, and chewed on it and studied what it meant to be a, a Jewish believer, and studied the important times and moments in our history and our heritage and our, our culture. And, um, and at 13, he made mom and dad, dad very proud as he shared his bar mitzvah. If you look on that table, you see a chauffeur. Uh, he learned to play the chauffeur, and at every Jewish holiday, our, uh, our church would celebrate many of the Jewish holidays. My son would blow that chauffeur for our congregation, and that was very precious to many of us. That chauffeur was precious because, I, Bruce, I believe it was at your bar mitzvah, we went to Israel after your bar mitzvah, and our family, the kids, we brought Poppy Lou, we brought you that chauffeur. And for many years, that was my father's chauffeur and, and resided with our family in Pinebrook. And then my father very graciously um, handed that chauffeur down to me. And because my son was our chauffeur player, probably about a year ago, I gave him that chauffeur. <laughs> And so that, that chauffeur has been part of three generations in our family. And when I'm done sharing, one of Ben's friends, David, will come up here, I'll tell you, and he's going to blow that chauffeur. Ben was homeschooled all his life. By the time he was in, uh, getting ready for 11th grade, we, we knew that he needed to go to school that that homeschool, as, as, as good as it was, that it was time to send him to a place, a, a regular school, and it was Christian school, and he really liked it. They, they had to wear ties. Um, you can imagine, first year in school, a, a macho kid, that he was thrilled to wear ties. And so what he did was he would go to thrift stores and find the god doggest ugliest ties out of style the pit poor disgusting green with stuff on it that doesn't belong to be on any human being and he would they didn't say it needed to be a nice tie they just said he had to wear a tie um then, you know, it was a Christian school, and those who know Christian schools know that they have a lot of rules, some good and some silly, and he thought most of them were silly rules. Sorry, that's what he thought. Some of his teachers are here. And, um, and, um, but Ben delighted in smoothing his teachers because he would break the rules, and he would see his friends get punished, but he had a way of making his teachers laugh. And he would never get punished for it, all the kids. He was able to get off the hook and cause his teachers to laugh and fall in love with him. 